were released by Mr. Erdogan's office. Are now a war. Is should be concluded quickly through the start of direct or indirect negotiations. Well, the question many people is, are now asking is what uh, would the trigger be for Israel's regional enemies to get involved? And if they were to attack Israel, how would its biggest ally, uh, the United States, uh, respond? Well, joining me now is Ari Aramesh, is a Democrat strategist and foreign policy analyst. Thanks very much for being with us. So, first of all, the U.S. is clearly building up its military assets in the region. Is this a deterrence or is it because they really fear this could explode into a regional war? Uh, up to last Sunday, it was a deterrent posture. You have USS Eisenhower now going, instead of going to the Mediterranean, it's going to Central Command Area, going to the Persian Gulf. You have USS Gerald Ford and the other strike group containing about 10 other ships already in the eastern Mediterranean. And there are talks that USS Nimitz might set sail and leave uh, the, uh, the, the United States and actually go to the CENTCOM area of operations. As you know, as you know Central, Central Command, headquartered in Doha, Qatar, has its naval operations in Manama, Bahrain. It, it covers the Arabian Sea, the Persian Gulf, and clearly covers everything from Afghanistan all the way up to Israel. So that covers sort of the uh, area of operations for the Central Command. Now, I think Secretary of State Ant Anthony Blinken and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin on their Sunday uh, appearances on uh, the various American news shows made it clear that uh, they are no longer talking about a, sending a message of de-escalation to Te Tehran. For the, for the first two weeks of this conflict, the message to Tehran was this, you de-escalate, we'll back off. We just want to make sure that our ally Israel is protected. Uh, that didn't go well. It, it seems Tehran has interpreted these messages of de-escalation as a sign of weakness, unwillingness, and lack of political will in Washington to take action. And that's why we saw so many attacks by Iranian proxies in Iraq and Syria and Lebanon, especially in Iraq and Syria, against U.S. forces. The, uh, uh, the uh, Assad uh, air base in Iraq, the Al Tenf uh, air base in, in, in Syria, and also some U.S. troops in northeastern Syria in the province of Haseki, which falls right in between Turkey, Syria, and Iraq came under attack. We just had reports today that 26 American service members were wounded, lightly wounded. They're all back in active duty service. But again, they were attacked. So uh, it shows that Iranian proxies uh, perhaps are, and most likely with the, with the green light of Tehran, and Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, who is the supreme right. leader of Iran, who is the key uh, decision maker there, they are taking shots at U.S. forces, and, 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 and they're not really taking this, these warnings seriously. And that's why we're seeing not only strike groups going in there, but 2,000 Marines, an F-16 squadron, and an F-15 Eagle squadron going from Britain to, uh, to the Persian Gulf to make sure that Iran is taking these threats seriously. Yeah. Now, I mean, if Hezbollah did become involved in this, how difficult would that make things then for Israel? The question of Hezbollah getting involved again goes back to Tehran. If you notice, right before I came on the screen, uh, Hassid Hassan Nasrallah, the leader of Hezbollah, in his meeting with Mr. Nakhala, the uh, leader of Islamic Jihad, in that room, he was sitting under two portraits. Those figures are not Lebanese leaders. It was a portrait of Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, the current supreme leader of Iran, and Ayatollah Ruhollah Khomeini, the former supreme leader of Iran, the man who led the 1979 Islamic Revolution. So it shows Hezbollah, a Lebanese political and, mili and, and militant and terror organization, for that matter, has its loyalties directly to Tehran. So if, if Hezbollah were to get engaged, it would come, uh, again, as I, as I always say, if Hamas is Iran's ally, Hezbollah is Iran's beloved child. So if there will be, a, if there were to be an engagement, it would be with Iran's blessing without a doubt. The question is, is Iran really okay. willing to risk the destruction of Hezbollah with U.S. and Israeli attacks to save Hamas? But also, is Iran willing to let Hamas get completely destroyed, an organization that has helped build and support for the past 22 years at least, since, since 1995, for the past 30 years for that matter, and not do anything about it. I, 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 I'm not sure if cooler heads are okay. going to prevail. So, yeah. OK, Ari, I appreciate that. And uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for coming on. This is a...